Hi, Max. Hi, Andrea. Nice to talk to you again. How do you see cities globally progressing toward the um, smart city maturity curve? Yeah, I think we talked about this about a year ago, and we agreed that cities are at the core of the digital economy. And investing in technology to improve quality of life, grow economic opportunities and make them more environmentally sustainable. And that is still true. We've seen progress, definitely. We've had interactions with cities across the globe. And they're going from siloed investment in certain initiatives, for example, buying Internet of Things devices, into more of a platform view mm. where they're trying to break down those silos and generate more collaboration and drive better value across the ecosystem. What challenges are they trying to solve to accelerate their smart cities roadmap? Well, I think we mentioned the Internet of Things or IoT and all of the cities that we're talking to are investing in some sort of devices or instrumentation of their physical assets. Um, we actually carried out a survey of more than 100 local governments globally and literally all of them are investing in IoT. It's about now figuring out the appropriate use cases that can drive value and it's about trying to understand what are the platform components from a data integration, data transmission and data security perspective that can really generate those benefits and address some of the concerns that cities have. Does IDC predict that um, cities may be vulnerable to more cyber attacks if they become more digitalized? Yeah, we think so. Um, mm -hmm. Digital has a lot of opportunities and potential, but it's also generating some risks. And we have our annual top 10 prediction, and we usually have one doom and gloom prediction. And for this year, it was that at least one mid-sized to large cities globally will be impacted by a cyber attack in their physical infrastructure and they will be affected for a whole day before they're able to recover either water treatment or public lighting or traffic lights. So the fact that smart cities are an ecosystem with many entry point and the fact that they're instrumenting a lot of assets, GPS on public transport vehicles, uh, Wi-Fi access points, lampposts being connected, traffic lights, video cameras, they're all generating a little bit more vulnerability. So they'll have to address uh, the issue from a different perspective. What should cities do to make uh, their video system more cyber resilient? Yeah, in, in this all IoT enable transformation, clearly video is important. It's one of those elements that is enabling cities to go from simple situational awareness to situational intelligence, where you can predict th things in terms of traffic flows and congestion, in terms of public security risks, or even more tactical things like optimizing parking uh, or traffic uh, lights and so forth and so on. And to manage the potential of video surveillance in a safe way and to uh, also get value out of new technologies like body-worn cameras, drone-mounted cameras, or even use video feeds from the private and commercial sector, cities will have to consider security by design. So they'll have to think of security for all layers of the architecture, the device, the video management system, the analytics and not just think of security as a patch after everything has been built. They'll have to have policies and standards that all of the partners in the ecosystem can comply with. They'll have to be more proactive because doing predictive analytics and penetration testing will save them some issues. Um, and none of them can be immune from attacks, so they will have to collaborate with emergency response systems uh, and centers from a cybersecurity perspective. And last but not least, they should consider going deeper in their collaboration with their video surveillance systems provider because the systems have attributes and characteristics and features 
that can be leveraged, like filtering IP addresses, uh, applying encryption, and all other different ways of how you configure the device, the connectivity, the video management, and the analytics that can help make video surveillance safer. Thanks, Max. It's been interesting, again, discussing this topic with you. Thank you, Andrea.